issues that were wrestled with during the abolition struggle were things that carried over into what Dr. Bertrand is going to talk about um, um, the next time we meet. Michael Bertrand, uh, Associate Professor of History at Tennessee State University. On the next session of the Created Equal program, we're going to be talking about the documentary film Slavery by Another Name, uh, which looks at uh, the post-emancipation uh, life and realities of African Americans in the South. Uh, particularly, we'll be looking at the uh, evolution of the New South and its relationship to African Americans and labor, particularly. Uh, we'll also be looking at um, music and tying in music, evolution of music, and how that tied into the criminalization of African Americans, uh, which will be a constant until the middle of the 20th century. I'm Dr. LaRotha Williams, Jr. I'm Assistant Professor of History at Tennessee State University. Many early historians viewed Reconstruction as a colossal failure. One of the most intriguing stories of the 19th century, indeed, in the history of the United States is the transition of African Americans from enslaved persons to free people. Um, this transition was very, very difficult. Slavery ended with the ratification of the 13th Amendment, but in reality it began disintegrating during the last years of the war. The principal problem for the South and the nation was the new status of African Americans. They were free, but how exactly were we going to define freedom? Well, there were a series of reconstruction plans that were, that were issued. Um, as early as 1863, Lincoln issues his 10% plan, in which he says that when 10% of a sudden state swears an oath of allegiance to the Union, then that state could consider itself reconstructed. In May of 1865, after Lincoln was assassinated, his vice president issued a proclamation on May 29th, which basically offered amnesty to all Southerners, with some notable exceptions. Finally, Congress which ultimately saw Reconstruction as a, a congressional duty, issued a bill that was introduced by two men, Benjamin Wade and Henry Winter Davis, which said exactly what Lincoln's plan said, but um, the only difference was that it required a simple majority of people who swore an oath of allegiance to the Union. Then that state could consider itself reconstructed. But in each of those plans, both President Johnson and Lincoln, and then the Congress, failed to take into account the four million African Americans who were living in the South. The South had always had laws on the books that controlled the African American population. And even though the South was defeated, even though the South had been brought to its knees by the Civil War, they continued to pass laws to keep African Americans as close to slavery as possible. These laws were called Black Codes. Black Codes limited African Americans' ability to travel. It tied them to occupations that were linked to the land. African Americans did not get the right to vote in any of the southern states. The national government assisted African Americans, however, in making this transition from slavery to freedom with the creation of the Freedmen's Bureau. The Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, or commonly known as the Freedmen's Bureau, sought to help African Americans with this transition by issuing rations. A ration was enough food to feed an individual for a week, it created hospitals, it opened up insane asylums, it created orphanages, but the area in which it enjoyed its greatest accomplishments, its, its, its greatest successes, was in the area of education. 
the Freedmen's Bureau donated abandoned lands, confiscated lands, and materials to the Freedmen for the purpose of making schools. These schools sprung up everywhere throughout the South. The Bureau even went as far as to bring teachers from the North to the South to teach the Freedmen. One of the legacies of the Freedmen's Bureau in the area of education are some of the historically black colleges that exist today. These include Howard University in Washington, D.C., Hampton University in Virginia, um, Atlanta University, Fisk University in Nashville, Talladega University in Alabama, and Tougaloo College in Mississippi. One of the legacies of the, of the Reconstruction period are the Reconstruction Amendments. The 13th Amendment, with, uh, which abolished slavery. The 14th Amendment, which made African American citizens. As a matter of fact, the 14th Amendment establishes birthright citizenship, which is really important because what it means basically if your, if your parents are citizens or one of your parents is a citizen, you are a citizen. And then the 15th Amendment, which gave African American men the right to vote. Women still couldn't vote. They would not be able to vote until the 20th century. One of the myths that emerged out of this period was that Reconstruction was a period where African Americans took over the governments of the southern states and drove them into the ground. Okay. That is inaccurate. African Americans only controlled one house in one state legislature. And that was in South Carolina. And when we look at the demographics of South Carolina, when we look at the population of South Carolina, we should understand why fairly quickly African Americans represent a majority of the population. Hence, they would have majority in the House of Representatives in South Carolina. The thing that ended Reconstruction was the Compromise of 1877. After the contested election, Rutherford B. Hayes emerges as president. But in response to this, or in, in exchange for this, he had to appoint a Democrat to a high position in his office. Then he had to agree to remove the troops from the South, and then he had to allow the South to handle its, quote, Negro problem on its own terms. That was bad news for African Americans. Reconstruction is the period in which the KKK emerges, right here in Tennessee, down in Giles County, in, in Pulaski. By any definition, the Klan was a terrorist organization. They used the violence and death to prevent blacks from voting, to terrorize them, to keep them in their respective places. Although Congress investigated and ultimately passed a series of force bills that were designed to shut down Klan activity, violence against African Americans during this period never ended. 